Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 30th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2023. Almost the year of our Lord, 2024. Well, assuming we make it that far. You never know. You never know. <laughs> All right. So what I want to talk about today is a, a subject. Well, let's flip over and I'll play a couple seconds of the uh, intro to the iconic program here they want to talk about and person iconic person hello everyone and welcome to the vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed i'm michael voris mike michael voris i want to talk about michael voris i want to talk about understanding michael voris and church militant and what happened there and why Michael Voris's fall was his greatest expose ever. Look, so what do we, uh, how do we think about this, and why am I doing this, and by what authority am I doing this? I, I've never met Michael Voris. I've watched, watched him quite a few times. Uh, I have an interest in Roman Catholicism and what goes on over there. After all, I mean, one 1.5 billion Christians, what are you going to say? Uh, you just ignore that and pretend your your domain is the, the little Calvinist Baptist empire that consists of fewer people than, well, I don't know, Jehovah's Witnesses, much fewer. I mean, you you hardly even count as a denomination. Well, I'm not one of them anyway. I've been there, and rejected that. Um, I've at this point, I you know everything I look at, all the denominations. I've come to realize that something happened to me and a number of other people uh, once upon a time. Uh, Jesus called us out to Himself, and it was outside of the church environment, and the church has never gotten over that. By the way. Uh, part of the Jesus Revolution. That was this this amazing, uh, not revival. It was it was the spirit. Revival is when you bring the dead to well the, uh, the the ones that died, Christians that have died, and bring them back to life, uh, are almost dead. The churches, well, God just bypassed the churches. He he went to the to the hippies and uh, young people everywhere. Uh, there, I, what, why this came up in mind the other day is that there's a, I guess there's a movie out called The Jesus Revolution. I'm not going to watch it. It's not of any interest to me because it's apparently it's probably focused on the West Coast and Lonnie Frisbee, of all people. Uh, yeah, Lonnie Frisbee was a bit of a celebrity for a while. Um, is he an example, a good example of what actually God did? No, he's not. Uh, he's like the uh, the seed that fell on the shallow soil, in many ways. Uh, but God, it, it wasn't just an American phenomenon either. It was in Europe. It was every place else. It was, it, we're all, it was also called the Jesus freaks, because we it didn't come and it didn't happen in the churches. It happened other places. It happened to me when I was in the military, and it had nothing to do with what was going on on the West Coast. It was God's work, and he just called people to himself. He, Christ called people. The Holy Spirit convicted us of our sins and showed us Christ crucified for our sins and called us to him, called us to Christ. We belong to him. He saved us, which is one of the reasons I, you know, so I, I go to these to, to churches looking for a place that I feel comfortable with, and it's like, wait a minute. See, once you've known the power of God unto salvation, <laughs> substitutes just don't cut it. They just don't cut it. So the people, it's not that they're not Christians. They're just like, we're just different, I guess. I'm speaking for others. I just assume that's, but I mean, there was there was. It's not like there was huge multitudes, um, but we were not insignificant either. When I was in the Air Force, is when it happened to me, and there was there was other people around. In fact, God kept sending them by my dorm room. And you had two people in a room, and I'd get these other people that were 
different. Not the kind of stuff I grew up with as a Lutheran. No, it was different. People ask you, are you born again? And I had no idea what he's talking about. I thought, oh, that must have something to do with baptism or something like that. Or confirmation or something. You know, it was, it was doctrine. It's like, no, it's something that happens, God does to you. You become his property, his possession. You become his espoused. And we just don't fit in a lot of other places because we didn't, we were not the product of the system. God just bypassed the churches. They didn't know what to do with us. They didn't. Some of them tried to to help and get on like uh, on board uh, uh, like uh, what's his name out there with Calvary Chapel Chuck Smith and he was a pretty good guy actually uh, but again he was just one pastor at one church and this thing was a global phenomenon and it was it was God reaching out to a disillusioned young generation that that had everything I mean we had we had freedom we had prosperity, we had material possessions, our parents grew up in the depression, they, they didn't have it, so they wanted us to have it. So we had all this stuff, and, you know, we, we, we never knew hunger. Uh, I could have gone to college if I wanted to. Uh, but the, we, we were looking for reality, and we didn't see it in the world. People were taking drugs, looking for reality. They are looking for something beyond what the world offered. And that's when Christ came in and grabbed some of us for himself. Some of us, the story even goes back farther than that. Some of us already belonged to him. We just didn't know it. <laughs> we didn't know it yet, but we were already set aside to him. Uh, but I, what I want to look at here is Michael Voris. And so my, you know, looking at him, I look to a, uh, at him as a Christian that's been born again Christian for 47 years. I watched him fairly frequently, uh, his Vortex uh, show, which was the pretty much the flagship of that. He was a um, formerly a professional broadcaster, reporter kind of guy, and uh, started this um, church militant as a Christian ministry, a Catholic ministry, uh, uh, doing exposés on the corruption in the church, largely. Um, so exposing the, the homosexuality, the sexual corruption, and the other things that were going on in the hierarchy, and the, especially in the bishops and uh, the cardinals, this kind of stuff. And he was just putting it on display, the truth. He's not making things up. He was exposing what was really going on. So why was he doing that? Well, I think we understand now, or I can understand now. I don't know if you do, but that's why I'm doing this. Uh, I'm sympathetic to Michael Boris. I hope he finds true deliverance from the bondage of sin. But I can understand those struggles. It, it's not something all Christians should know, under, understand these things. We should all be sympathetic. We all have sin in our mortal bodies. It's not like it's something unique. And homosexuality is no more, no more of an abominable sin than the love of money. Idolatry. This love of money is idolatry. Of course, the United States, that's accepted, right? Among Christians. Oh, look at how successful he is. You know? There's not a lot of attention paid from the pulpit to the love of money and possessions in this country, is there? Hmm, wonder why. Because the churches in the United States are largely conformed to the world. They are. We might as well face the, the fact. Uh, they are they are part a lot to a degree, they're part of the system. Um too much so. Some of them are completely given over to the world. Like the Episcopalians. And the, well the now has the well I'd see finally I guess the deadline for the United Methodists is the 31st of this, March, of, of this month. So there's thousands of Methodist churches that are exiting the system. 
Uh, that's a thumbs up. I wish uh, I, I'm afraid that that perhaps none of them in this area are, are exiting. I don't know of any, but I'm not. Uh, I don't hang around with United Methodists. But I know there there's some uh, that are trying to be faithful to Scripture, and there has to be divisions like this because you two can't walk together when they're you know, you can't walk together with with people that call themselves Christians and are uh, embracing manifest evil. And we can't walk together with ourselves in this too, and that's the situation with Michael Voris. And so my analysis of that, I'm not a psychotherapist, I think that's a whole bunch of hooey, but we have the mind of Christ and we have experience, human experience, including experience with ourselves and our own sins and everything else. And it's not a different kind of struggle. We all struggle with the sin that dwells in our mortal body. That's why we re re await the redemption of our bodies. So it's not something that we can't empathize with. We should be able to empathize. If you cannot empathize with Michael Voris, you cannot, you cannot see through the eyes of Christ. You must be a Calvinist. That's going to be in the next video. <clears throat> I don't hate Calvinists. I want them to be set free from the bondage to a, uh, an evil ideology. It's not even a religion. It's an ideology. A false, false religion. Uh, grossly distorted in really serious ways. Uh, Roman Catholicism is much more Christian than Calvinism is. That's my, my analysis on that issue. Um, is Roman Catholicism the one true church? No, it's not. It's not. And that's one of the problems. So uh, Michael Voris, maybe I should put that back up on the screen just for fun. So Michael here, so what was the issue? Maybe I won't. Come to think of it. Um, in case anybody doesn't know, uh, a month or two ago, uh, there his uh, his own sins were exposed. He's uh, same sex attracted, and apparently uh, was unable to live a consistently celibate lifestyle, uh, which is understandable. I mean, we should. How many of you have have no sin in your in your flesh? There, there's <laughs> that would be unbiblical. You know, like the holiness movement, they, they are only self-deceived. They know they're sinners. They just won't commit, admit it. They, it's like, when you redefine sin, so it's not, you know, it cuts out everything but the grossest sins, and that's not how it works. But Michael, um, his career... He made a, a career out of exposing the corruption in the Catholic hierarchy, and rightly so. Uh, but he he did have a bit of an angry personality, and also after the, his fall, his exposure and his uh, dismissal. I don't know exactly what his status is. Uh, I think he's on a spiritual retreat or something now, to try to deal with his demons. But uh, yeah, they're pesky things. See, if, if you've got, Satan will get his hooks in you, and it's hard to dig. You ever try to get a fish hook out of your flesh? Yeah. Those barbs are, they're difficult to deal with. But, uh, and sin is difficult to deal with, especially when you don't know how to do it. And none of us are very good at doing it. So when you try to do it in your own strength, you'll fail every single time. Every single time. You try to do it, it, it out of your own will, out of your determination, instead of just handing it off to Christ and say, God, you, you've got to fix this. I can't do it. Not, and, and know that he promises. Christ is made unto us sanctification and justification. And the problem that Michael didn't expose is uh, the serious issue with Roman Catholicism, that it cuts people off from the gospel. So he had these these uh, show. He called them demons. It's called sin. 
demons love sin, though, so they're there. They're ready to tempt you anytime at an opportune moment because they love to see Christians mess up and fall. And Satan, you know, Michael was being a, a pain in the butt to Satan for exposing uh, all Satan's bishops and cardinals and stuff that were that he spent a lot of a lot of time putting in those places, including the Pope. That's that's Satan's man, especially Pope Francis. Especially Pope Francis. But uh, in hindsight, knowing that Michael had these problems, now it, it makes sense. A lot of things make sense. Uh, one of the other things that came out that some of the employees at the, this thing had expanded it uh, over the years. I looked on YouTube here, his oldest videos go back 11 years. So he's been doing this a long time and expanding over that time, bringing on employees, it became a bigger thing. And uh, and sometimes apparently he had a, a reputation of not being necessarily kind to the employees. I imagine he had outbursts of anger. Why do I say that? Because that's what happens when you're angry inside. If you have anger inside of you, especially anger with yourself, uh, irritants will, it'll boil over. And people, you snap at people for almost no reason because of the anger that's, that's boiling inside of you. In this case, anger with himself, among other things. And being unable to contain that. So the the, the uh, revelation that he was uh, a difficult person to work for uh, and didn't treat his employees well is understandable. I mean, it, it sort of goes with the situation. It goes with the stress of of living this a life where you are are exposing uh, the the homosexual sins and the pedophilia and the corruption in uh, the inst Roman Catholic institution while you yourself are struggling with those same things inside you. And I think that is the, the, the understanding uh, when I was thinking about this. I don't know why it came up this morning. But uh, I was thinking about this, and uh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Makes sense. The reason he was fighting against this, and this is my analysis, okay, and you can take it for whatever it's worth. His, he was the anger, not only with himself, but also with the institution, the the corruption in the institution, and the and the 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 homosexuality that dominates. Uh, the Vatican. He was exposing it. And there was anger in that exposure. And why? Why? <sighs> because the institution was not able to fulfill its promises. See, Roman Catholicism, it claims to be the one true church, it uh, and, and the Pope claims to be the vicar of Christ. It claims to have all this power. But it can't set you free from sin. It has no power to do that because it's, 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 it's advertising is not true. It is not the one true church. It, it locks up Jesus Christ behind this facade created by man, the institution, uh, and the system of sacraments and everything else and says that Christ distributes his grace through this institution. And you have to look to the institution. But freedom only comes from a personal relationship with Christ himself. He is the power of God unto salvation. He is our atonement. He is made unto us justification and sanctification and wisdom and redemption. It's Christ himself. So when Christ is locked up uh, behind a commercial venture, you know, it's like it's as if somebody uh, 
took Christ and the gospel and capitalized him, made a business of him, marketing him, distributing his grace as a commercial product. Yeah, you have to you have to come to us. You have to come to our priests. We're the only one that can give you the grace of God. We have a monopoly on it. We are the one true church. And then you find out that that grace can't set you free from sin because it's not the grace of Christ. It's not the grace of God. Christ is the grace of God himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I think Michael had this anger in him because that institution, that corrupt institution, did not set him free from the sins that bound him, from what he knew was was wicked um, as a devout Catholic. The institution says, you know, it's, it's in a way, it's like when Jesus in the in the Sermon of the Mount he ends that sermon. He's preaching the law. He's not preaching grace. He's preaching the law there. Therefore, you shall be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Well, you, the purpose of the law is to reveal your sinfulness. But if you can't come to Christ, who is the grace of God, for the free gift of eternal life, for the free gift of righteousness, for the free gift of sanctification. Why? Because the institution cuts you off. You have to go through them. They put themselves as middlemen. They inject themselves between you and Christ. That's the great evil of not just Roman Catholicism, all religions, all systems that man makes. He builds, they, they exploit, they try to exploit God, just like the Pharisees did, and use God for their own personal ends. Intentionally? Probably not. It grows over time, and over you know the last 2,000 years almost, Satan behind the scenes, everything he does is evil. And unless you're born again, well, he's your master. But if you have the knowledge of right and wrong, but you can't conform, you think it is your works that Christ subsidizes you, but it is finally up to you to make atonement for your sin, at least in some degree, and to, to, to do what is necessary you must do what is necessary. God will help you, but he doesn't do the, it's your work in part at least, then you're in bondage. You're in bondage. You can never meet God's standards. But God gives you a righteousness that he's made for you. He gives you the wedding garment. Christ purchased it for you. It's his own righteousness, Christ's righteousness given to you as a free gift. That's what the Scripture teaches. That's what the Apostle Paul taught. But religion, regardless of Christian religion, so-called, doesn't want you to know the truth. Of course, they themselves don't know the truth. They're a product of the system, too. So people respond to it either just giving up like the bishops. Now let's just have an orgy here. And then we'll bless each other and distribute mass, you know, to each other. Just they're just a mockery of Christ. And Michael rightly angered at that and their inability or unwillingness to deliver him from his son. struck out at them, exposed them. In fact, Michael's fall is the greatest expose possible of the impotence of the Roman Catholic hierarchy. 
and their system. It cannot deliver a faithful Catholic from bondage to sin. Sad thing. Sad thing. Michael, I'll pray for you that God will set you free because he's the only one that can. Jesus Christ. You'll find your freedom, Michael, in him. As all Catholics, you'll find the grace of God in Christ himself. Don't accept any middlemen. You have to go directly to Christ because he is your Savior. Go to somebody else, they can't do it. Mary can't save you. She is not the Messiah. Only Christ, who is the God-man, the mediator between God and man, that died for your sins. He loves you far more than Mary possibly ever could. Why? Because he hung on that cross to save you, not just from the punishment of your sin, but from your sins themselves. All that we receive from God is through faith in Christ, not through our works, through faith alone in Christ alone. And I hope they don't take Michael's videos down. They're still up. I hope they somehow leave them up on the Internet. Although, whether the organization that he built will survive, I don't know. I pray that Michael finds the truth in Christ. True liberty. Both from guilt and from, the, from bondage. And Michael, if you do that, you need to go back to Church Militant and continue um, proclaiming Christ, the Savior, 